everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun, fun fold card. <laughs> I'm calling this a side panel card because I didn't know what else to call it. Um, it's using all of the new products or a lot of the new products from the V&A 2 collection um, by Trimcraft. So this is my first official design team project. So I hope you like it. And this is what I've done. So if I just bring it up a bit closer there and it's just got a really cool look about it. So it stands up like, well, I guess you can kind of have it like that. You can have it kind of offset behind it a little bit there. It's entirely up to you. But I've just kind of, yeah, just had fun with this one. And I've added a bookmark with this one, but obviously you don't have to. Now the one I'm gonna show you today, I'm not going to put the bookmark in. So this will just be plain, okay? But it'd be really nice, you could maybe have like the, this personalized, you could have someone's name running down the side here. It's entirely up to you, but you can add a bookmark and I think that's quite a nice touch as well. Now the whole thing folds flat like so and it will fit in a five by seven envelope but i have used here the little flat back pearls i've used this gorgeous bunting trim the little ribbons here these are stickers from the pack this is the embossing powder embossing powder embossing folder which is gorgeous and then the papers here i just loved this design so this is the one i wanted to use first and then on the back you've got room here to write your message or you could do it on this section here as well so there's the yeah there's lots going on i think it works really really well okay so let's just go through what you will need so i've used the vna flat back pearls i've got the mini bows here the ribbon, which I used on the bookmark, but I just thought I'd just show you there. It's a really, really lovely ribbon. This is the embossing folder. Really lovely. Just love all the detail in that embossing folder. The stickers. So I actually stuck the sticker, which I've got here, on cardstock. So it was that one there. And then it creates just, a, you know, works perfectly on your cards. So if you ever got stickers and you think, oh, I don't know how to use them, put them on cardstock first and then they become a bit more easier to use, I would say. So that's those ones there, and then this is the paper packs, this is the 8x8. But I did show all of this in my unboxing um, video, which you can find um, in my C videos. Okay, so you are going to need, so I've already fussy cut a few bits and pieces there. Let's just get rid of those bits. Okay, so for the main card, you need a piece of seven by 10. Then to make the kind of frame, this piece here, so this decoration, the kind of mats and layers, you need a piece of cardstock, any colour obviously depending on what you're using, but it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And then a piece that is six and a half by four and a half. So that's my pattern. Then to decorate the inside, you need a piece that's three and three quarters by four and three quarters. And then to layer on top of that, you need a piece that is three and a half by four and a half and that's the embossed piece if i just show you there just look how lovely that embossing folder is it's so pretty so detailed and then to create the kind of side panel piece you need two pieces that are two and a quarter by six and three quarters one will go on the back to write your message and one will be your your mat and then this is going to be the pattern layer to go over the top on the front panel so this is six and a half by two Okay, now if you want to make the bookmark, you will need a piece of cardstock that is one and three quarters by six, and then you just want to drop down by a quarter of an inch for each mat and layer on top of that, and again, just cover it on the back. But that's how I made that one. Okay, again, I'll write those um, measurements and stuff over on my blog. First of all, what you need to do, the, the, the kind of way that this comes together is very similar to doing a stepper card or a centre stepper card. So if you've ever made those kind of cards before you, then you'll kind of get what we're doing. But what you want to do first of all is start off at your one inch marker here and you're going to come down by one inch and come in by one inch. So I'm just going to line my ruler up there and then just, I've got my one inch marker here on my ruler and then I'm just going to put a little kind of wedge just a marker on my cardstock. Now you can use a pencil if you want, but we're actually gonna be scoring this line anyway. So if you can kind of make sure you sit your marker within one of the tracks of the scoreboard, it'll make it much easier. So for that first one there, I've just come down one inch and come across one inch. Then you wanna do the same here. So you're coming in one inch and coming down one inch. So just line your ruler up with the six inch marker. And again, come down, following your ruler there, just come down to the one inch and again put a little indent with your stylus making sure it's sitting in the track okay 
Then if you rotate your cardstock along the long, in, long side, you then want to join those two dots up. Now because it's already in the track, it should just perfectly line up. So you can see now we've got that score line within our card. Okay. Pop it then back into the seven inch side. And what you want to do next is you want to score all the way down to six inches. Now I've just started it off, but then if I get my ruler, line it up at the six inches here on my scoreboard, and then I can just bring my stylus down to there. Okay. Again, just go across this one because it will already be lined up in the track. So just along the one inch and come down like so. Okay. So then we've got that shape now. Okay. Then rotate it back onto the 10 inch side and you want to join that one up. So start at the six inches and just bring it down. So now what we've just created is this kind of square within our cardstock, one inch away from all the sides apart from this side here. Okay. Then you want to do two score lines at five inches just on the outer parts of that square. So you're not going through the square. So if I just show you, I'm just going to go like so up to the score line only. You do not want to go in this section. And then again, you want to continue that down to the other side. So I'm just going to line my ruler up. I've scored at five down to the score line. Then kind of hover your stylus all over that square part and then just continue like so. So you can see now I've just got my score line there and also at the top there. Next, you want to score at two inches within that square. So I can just kind of find my stylus, use your ruler if you would prefer, but you just want to score. So that was the one inch one and now we just scored at two. Okay, you can see it really well actually on this card, which I'm glad about. Then our final score line is at seven and a half all the way down. So you can now get rid of your style and um, your scoreboard and we need to do some cutting with our cutting knife and ruler. So with the cardstock currently we've got the 10 inch side here, we've got our one, two, our five inch and then that's six inch and then that's that seven and a half. Turn it on its side here and you're going to cut down these two lines. So we're just going to cut from that one inch down to the six, again the one down to the six, okay? That's the only cut lines that you need to do on this card. So again, I'm just going to pop my ruler down there and just very carefully, please watch your fingers. This is the Tonic Studios knife and it is brilliant, but my gosh, it is sharp. Okay. So now, if I just bring that one up, you can see that's cut a really nice line within that square. And again, do the same on this side. So like I said, this isn't hard to do, but it is, I'd say, a bit more advanced. So, you know, if you have done a lot of cards, then, you know, go for it. If you kind of think, oh, can I do it? Do it. But it is down to precision. I mean, you, you know, you need to make sure that you don't go over any parts with your scoring because obviously if you went too far here, you'd see it. So you do need to, everything there has to be really super neat. Okay. So now I've got these two cut pieces in the middle of my um, cardstock. So next we can do some folding. So the first score line, this one inch score line, we're going to fold down. So we're creating a mountain fold like so. Then the next one will be a valley. Okay, so just kind of pinch that like so. Then these five inch ones are going to be mountains. So pinch both of those like so. And then this one here is going to be a mountain as well. And then the last one is going to be a valley. Like so. And there's the card. If you fold it all over, it will fold completely flat into a five by seven folded card. And just go along and really burnish all of those score lines. Like so. And there you have it. How nice is that? So now you've got this blank, blank, this blank canvas <laughs> to play around with and decorate. So now I'm going to talk you through how to decorate this kind of C shape here because it is a little bit awkward but again I've broken it all down and it should now be pretty straightforward to do. So with the two larger pieces here, so I told you these two here, 
make sure I've got that one up the right way. So first of all, so this is a one inch kind of um, C shape here. I now want to make a three quarters of an inch C shape to go around it. So all you have to do, pretty straightforward, but let me grab my, okay, with your ruler. So along the longer side, line your ruler up and just put a pencil mark at three quarters of an inch and then come down here and you want to do a pencil mark again at three quarters of an inch okay and then you want to go pop it into the portrait position and you want to come start from the top and just lightly put a pencil mark at three quarters and again at the bottom three quarters and then just lightly join those up like so and then pop it on this way and do three quarters along the bottom of this side so again just on that other long side if you want make a template first because this would work well as a template and then again three quarters that way there and again join those two marks up should use my Tim Holtz ruler actually because then I wouldn't have to mark at both ends because it does it all for you but never mind this is a way for others who don't have that like so so I've just drawn that lightly now like I said you can use this as your template but now all we're going to do is cut down this one here and along this one here and then cut this section out in the middle Okay, so now we've got this piece that will sit perfectly within that section, giving us a really nice border on all of the th well three sides, like so. So I can just rub that piece out now, just that pencil mark that you can see. Next you want to do exactly the same again. I'm going to flip this piece over because it's not a directional paper as such. I mean, I know where it doesn't matter if I do the C from that side or from this side, but just flip it over. And this time you want to do exactly the same, but you're going to do it half an inch. So again, we're just dropping down. So I'm just going to sit that in here and just do half an inch, half an inch, and again on the other side, like so. And then come along the top and just do the left-hand side at half an inch, at half an inch. And again, just join up with those pencil lines. Okay, like so, and then again, just with my scissors, just cut that out. So yeah, I'll flip that one over. Actually, I don't know why I did, just didn't say that before. It doesn't matter about the pencil marks. You can just flip over, flip the card over, like so. So now that one, I flip it over. So it doesn't matter about the pencil mark. That piece will sit perfectly. Look at that. And you get a really nice frame. So next you need to stick that all down. So I'm going to stick the white one on first and then stick the patterned one over the top. Okay, and then very carefully start from one of the bottom, you know, flat um, sides. So where this piece of cardstock runs along and it's just easier to line it all up like so. And then stick this one on. And again, just very carefully, I'm just starting on that kind of left hand side first and then just can then work it along and it should, like I said, perfectly all sit together. And it really starts to bring the card to life now. Okay, next you then want to stick your centre pieces in, so not that one, don't want to get them mixed up. So these two here, so I'm going to stick this one on top and just carefully stick that one over the top, giving yourself a nice equal border. And then just stick this one onto the inside of the card. Okay, again, you'll have the same border that you will have between the pink and the white against the white and the green. Okay, and fold it all flat. How nice does that all start to come together? You can see there. Okay. Then you can do your side panel here and that panel on the back. So this one will go like so, with that one over the top and then the other white one on the back. Okay, so there is the side panel and the back. You can see it all folds nicely. 
just I really really like this fold I think it's so fun then it's just up to you now how you want to decorate it so I have already like I said done this one here so it's going to go kind of on an angle like so and then I fussy cut leftover flowers from the other card and they're going to go like so oh grab that one something like that okay and then I've done the bunting so this was that um did I show the pack of bunting actually oh no I think so here's the bunting I forgot about that one there we go so yeah, you get loads, absolutely loads, 60 mini bunting and twine. So all I've done is just selected these ones here and I've just stuck them on the back and then they are going to go across the top like so. I think it looks so cute. And then I have the bows that all match and these match perfectly with the cardstock so it just really kind of makes this pink colour here kind of pop and they're going to go either end of the bunting like so. How cute. So I'm going to go and get that all stuck down. Okay, so now you can see that bunting, my happy birthday little sentiment and the bows. I think it's so cute. And I just love that this is just a nice area to just show off the really nice papers because sometimes I think when we make cards we can always cover a lot of it. Whereas I think this one just shows off just the paper because that's what we love. So if you did also want to add the bookmark for this little kind of the pocket at the bottom, I'll just show you here. So this kind of bit, it's just the same width, so two and a quarter, and then it's one and a half high, and then just a little mat to go on top, which would be two by uh, one and a quarter. Okay, just as an example, but it's entirely up to you. And then that obviously just sits inside. So it is a nice gift that way for someone who likes to read. So yeah, there you have it. Really, really lovely side panel cards. I think they look great, and they've got such a nice profile. They stand up really well. They're not too complicated for whoever has to, you know, open the envelope and kind of, you know, open them and think, oh gosh, what do I do? It's easy. Self-explanatory, it opens up and I think they look really, really fun. So there you have it. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and my first official <laughs> design team project for Trim Craft. There is going to be so many now. So yeah, hopefully you're going to enjoy what I'm going to be showing you and sharing. And yeah, until next time, please give this video a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.